Look at us from the side. You lack a nose, I lack a nose, we all lack a nose in Lackunosa Town! Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Pokemon White version! Last time, we had an anticlimactic battle against the legendary Qrem, which was so short that I had to find other things to do to kill the time! And that's unfortunately been a recurring occurrence with uh, our legendary battles across this great land of Unova. I've kind of been wishing for having worse luck in these fights because I want to freak out. I want to have a challenge. I don't want to fight the legendary birds again, but I'd kind of like for it to be a little harder, but I digress. This time, we are out on Route 13, and we are going to be seeing all that this vast, gigantic route has to offer. The Swingle looks like it lost three grams on Route 13. I wish I could help it. So, the first time that I ever read that text, and it actually came rushing back to me when I talked to her right there, I had never heard of letters referred to as grams. I know there's like telegrams, but I'd never heard of just grams. I thought it meant that Wingle flew so far that it lost three grams, as in it lost three, like, it lost weight as it was flying. And I was very confused as to how we were going to get it its weight back, feeding it berries or something. But yeah, I'm looking for a gram. Sorry, buddy. You're gramp. <laughs> Give me that get the first gram and we have a bit of a side quest it's been a while since we've had to go around collecting three of something I think the dancers in Castilia was the last time we had to do that so we got lots of people oh you what am I doing I'm hunting for treasure treasure hunting sounds fun sometimes things are buried in sand dunes actually I just found something but it's the same one as I found before so I will give this to you a shoal shell I'll be hunting for treasure here tomorrow too. I may find something, so if you have time, stop by. This guy can be talked to every single day, and he gives you some pretty nice stuff. This is a reference to Hoenn uh, in its item description. Uh, the shoal shell used to be used to create the shell bell. Uh, you'd have to get some of those as well as the shoal salts, but they are instead treasures that now can be sold to a maniac, as the shoal shell is no longer, um, or sorry, the shell bell is no longer locked behind that requirement. Very good daily NPC right there, but that's not all. Inside this house... Your quest for power has brought you here. Very well. Let me reward your passion with some absolutely astounding moves. They're the ultimate moves! Shall I teach them to your Pokémon? Well, which Pokémon should I teach? Only your starter Pokémon, or any starter Pokémon for that matter, doesn't matter whose it is, is able to do this. He is able to teach the moves... Frenzy Plant, Blast Burn, or Hydro Cannon. These are the most powerful moves of their type, with the exception of V-Create in the Fire type. 150 power, 90 accuracy, special damage, but you have to rest the next turn. It's basically Hyper Beam, but with the same type attack bonus of whatever type you have. I don't want to use this because in set battles, it's not very good, but if you're playing in shift battles, you might as well just blast someone with it if you know that you're going to want to switch out after using it, because... With the free switch, you don't have to recharge next turn, and it's very, very helpful. Good move if you're playing on the easier of the difficulties, but I'm personally not, so... I'm not so interested in that. My husband could teach Pokémon the ultimate moves! I'll tell you their names! The Blazing Fire-type Pokémon, Charizard, Typhlosion, Blaziken, Infernape, and Embor! The Restless Water-type Pokémon, Blastoise for Alligator, Swampert, Empoleon, and Samurott! The quiet grass type Pokemon. Oh, it's always the quiet ones. Venusaur, Meganium, Sceptile, Torterra, and Superior. When you take hidden abilities into account, I would definitely say it is always the quiet ones. They are very powerful. Now, there are, as you would expect filling such a super massive route, a lot of wild Pokemon that can be found. And that's not all. There's also a lot of just places to go. There's lots of trainers to fight. We're going to be here for a long while, and because now we've seen the bulk of this route and all that stuff, and uh, I didn't bring Boggle, I think we're going to get started on that. Actually, no. Uh, you have a letter that fell from the sky. I got it. Wingle dropped it. Here it is. Please give this to Wingle. Tell Wingle not to drop it this time. Yes, I'll tell him not to drop things by accident for the rest of his life. That'll teach him. So we got gram number one and gram number three, but we have not yet found gram number two. It's sort of like a uh, like one of those pranks where you run pigs loose in a high school and you label them pig number one and pig number three, but like they can't find pig number two and they're wondering where it is. That's kind of what it reminds me of. Ooh, okay. Um, 
let's just, let's get to fighting. And, uh, as we go around the route, I think we'll be good to just go over all the new Pokemon on it. So, let us get started. Right off the bat, we have Golbat! We have a type with some pretty good defenses that make it more than just a speedy Pokemon, but dang, it's a pretty speedy Pokemon. Of course, needing happiness to evolve is a bit of a turnoff for most, but it should be pretty easy to reach with your bike and your Soothe Bell. This is notable for being one of the few Pokemon to learn acrobatics, and it would be a pun crime if it didn't learn that. That's good, sure. But what's really just the best about it and getting to use that speed is effects like U-Turn and Taunt. Yet another common poison type that I think is better than you think it is. And hey, look who it is in the rustling grass. Crobat can be encountered at level 50, but shamefully, the Golbat in Dark Grass are much higher level. Next is Tangela. This little bundle of vines will one day take off its shoes and become a physical wall with very good stats. Right away, it'll have access to ancient power so that it can evolve, but both forms can be found. Tangrowth is a physical wall with very good stats. It's what you'd expect. It can take hits, use sleep powder, and recover HP in many various ways. It also learns Power Whip, a 120 power physical grass type move with 85% accuracy that barely anything learns at all, so it's nice to see it here. It's definitely strong in many ways and even works with a lot of good physical TM moves. Seriously, if you don't know the kinds of moves that Tangrowth can learn, try out your TMs on it. It'll surprise you. The flaws it has are basically just what you already see, being pure grass type and having a lot of weaknesses combined with being slow and unable to take special damage. It does its job well and is very fun. And perhaps if Amoongus didn't seem fun to you due to it packing less firepower, maybe you do want to trade off Spore and give Tangrowth a spin. We're three for three on Pokemon that I find very fun and think are better than you'd expect, but let's make it four. Swallow is lightning fast, but not much else. In the right situations, this can work. It's a great U-turn user, hits hard with return, and to a lesser extent, Aerial Ace. It also has same type attack bonus Quick Attack to deal with other priority moves that would normally outspeed it. It's a great Pokemon to bring out once you're sure the opponent's counter to it is gone and then just clean through the rest of their team with it. It definitely has its faults though. And as a personal fan of Swellow, we still gotta talk about it. Brave Bird is only available through breeding, which definitely cuts into its already limited power. The other big fault is a big one, which is scary to hear since that apparently means the last one wasn't the big one. I've listed all the types of moves that it learns already, except the Dark. Yeah, it's just very situational, but when it gets going, it gets going. Well, we're going from the most flawed Pokemon that I like here to an outright bad one. Meet Lunatone. With a lot of weaknesses, middle of the road speed, and without the strong physical bulk expected from rock types, it's left not being able to do much. It uses Psychic pretty well, and I guess a lot of Psychic types we've seen so far have been much slower than this, so it at least has that going for it among its Univin kin, but there's just not much of anything special about it. Thankfully, it at least has Rock Polish, but with so many woes holding it back, it just isn't anything that great. Hypnosis combined with Calm Mind is mildly interesting, though. Not much faring... Not faring much better is Soul Rock. Again, surprisingly no version exclusivity here. Soul Rock is more physically oriented, making it more of a traditional rock type, but it's still nowhere near as bulky as is usually expected from its kind. It is once again at least not moving at the speed of molasses, so there's at least that. I feel like Soul Rock got the better end of the stick since its strong attacking move of choice usually winds up being Stone Edge, and it benefits from Sunny Day with so many fire type moves and Solar Beam together with removing its water weakness. Again, it's not necessarily good, but I think it at least fared a little better than Lunatown. This is just route of the underappreciated Pokemon, Absol. So it's not as beefy as Heracross, and it's not too fast, but that attack stat is great, and it's definitely one of the best dark type attackers out there. It learns a few physical moves with high critical hit chance, and it has Sucker Punch for when it can't outspeed anything. It's a bit too situational to be your dedicated sweeper, but it can do well if used against the right foes. This is another offbeat Pokemon that I still like and think is far from the worst. And next, there's 
nothing quite like Drifblim. I don't mean it's good, I just mean that there's nothing quite like it. Immediately, this screams tank. Drifblim has one of the highest HP stats of all Pokemon, and its type grants it three very useful immunities. Sadly, those defenses backing up that HP are downright puny. To make up for it, Drifblim is able to learn Stockpile, but it's still not a lot. Generally, the way to go is to have Unburden for its ability and use a gem to boost damage when activating Unburden. This is so much more viable in Versus because in single player, gems get consumed forever after one use instead of just to the end of the fight. But hey, can I just see how cute its ability is? I mean it. It's so cute to imagine this thing dropping its hot air balloon basket because it's straining too hard to carry the cargo and getting faster because of it. I'd expect nothing less simultaneously cute and gruesome from a ghost. Staryu can be found commonly, but rippling water yields the greater treasure, very high-leveled Starmie. This is the epitome of a Pokemon that's withstood the test of time. Always been great in both playing environments and sometimes for even separate reasons from game to game. In any environment, it learns several strong moves, has two great attacking types, and is known for its type coverage and power. In Versus, it's universally loved for being one of the best Pokemon to learn Rapid Spin so that it can get rid of entry hazards right away. Really, just watch out for its general frailness and it'll be fine. Here beyond Starmie, we find a Pokemon that is before its glory days, Wingull. Pelipper is encountered at all the same levels. While this family isn't amazing by any stretch, Pelipper gets interesting moves that aren't learned by a ton of Pokemon. Roost. Talwin and Hurricane are all great examples and it gets them all naturally with no need for tutoring. Even if this isn't the Pelipper that kids of today love using on their VGC teams, it still thrives in rain due to Hurricane and would be at home in any team that uses rain. And because these roots can never stop with the new Pokemon, we are still going Corsola. Only found when surfing in rippling water, which is way too much trouble for this sucker. I consider pretty much nothing about Corsola to be worth anybody's time due to no stat over 85, never evolving, and its stats being just so particularly bad in just the right places. It's like it's trying to be a wall, but it's just so slow, doesn't manage to be actually bulky, and can get smacked down by pretty much anything that's super effective. I wish you evolved, because you're real cute, and a coral Pokemon is a great idea. Now for your overpowered fishing encounter, the Shelter family is here, and yes, I said family. Found under very rare circumstances in rippling water is Cloyster and... Ouch! Okay, Cloyster is good again, but sadly it requires breeding to do the things that make it so good. Basically it functions as a wall, but it can give that up by using Shell Smash and then use Skill Link with Icicle Spear and Rock Blast to make those moves always hit five times. It's a wondrous Pokemon, and it's great to see Cloyster be so great again, but if it's not being bred for those exact moves, it just falls short of the awesome potential that it now has at its disposal. And finally, we are ending on the Swarm, Shuppet. Too low level to be useful, and it doesn't even evolve into that great of a Pokemon. If you want it to leave a lasting impression, read Bayonet's Pokedex entry, and that'll hurt you more than any attack this thing could use against you. From my plus two that I have on those previous ones, even though you are special, I think I should be able to just charge right through ya. <laughs> charge. Yeah. That's kind of the strategy that I've been going with. Grow to level 63. Mash through those stats way too fast where you probably can't even see it if you pause the video or make it a quarter speed. And I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna get Boggle and we're gonna see what we can get with our HM moves. Recoil. Rocky helmets. <laughs> Poison. Dunk. I didn't know you could learn that. Learn something new about your friends every day. <laughs> uh, wow. You're actually a physical attacker too. I got a TM for Focus Blast. Let's do it for fun. <laughs> I'll probably reteach Focus Blast in time, but I've been saying no to too many fun moves lately. We gotta just do it. 
I like having Explosion on the team. I like having Metronome on the team. Those are just two moves that I have to fit in there somewhere, at least for a little while. Back up by that boulder on the south end of the route that we couldn't do anything about before, there's actually a few other things on this route that I want to draw special attention to. There's good stuff around here, and that continues with TM29 Psychic! I was just saying, I need a Psychic type move on the team somewhere, it's probably the best move type that I don't have on the team. And the moment of truth. <laughs> a pile of garbage is the only thing that can learn Psychic. You mean to tell me y'all are dumber than a sack of trash? <laughs> That's, that's really funny, and yet again in true fashion, Hilbert ends up using special moves that it has no business in using. Actually, you know what, no. Now that we are further along, I have been wanting to show this for ages. So, Hilbert is the only one in the party that learns Psychic. And ever since I ranted about uh, Poison Jab and how we have a TM for it, and it's such a natural fit for a Garboder, yet, oh, I don't know, Lee Vanny can learn it, Sock can learn it. Since then, that list has grown quite a bit. Lucario can learn it, for instance. But you want to know who else can learn it? Cryogonal! And apparently, Dwebble, too. But, but Cryogonal can learn Poison Jab. I've been waiting to point that out because it... it you're a physical attacker who learns no good physical moves until you're around level 60. And you're a special attacker slash special wall who learns every physical move under the sun. Which, by the way, the sun makes you melt, so that, that makes double no sense. I don't get it. <laughs> TM compatibility can be a very cruel mistress at times, and this is one of those cases. Uh, I want to go this way. We haven't done this yet. We're cutting down this tree. Still so happy I cut a Dwebble. I just kind of get to see its cute little face every single time that happens. is. The Electrizer evolves the Pokemon Electabuzz into Electivire. We've yet to encounter any of those. And it looks like we got a double battle. And also a sign. Trainer tips. While you're using the x Transceiver, if you press left, right, up, or down on the control pad, uh, the appearance of the screen changes in varied ways. Oh. All right. I don't know if we did that when we actually showed that off, but okay. We're gonna lead with Rock and Hex for a double battle because Rock's got Earthquake, Hex has got Levitate. Our combination is the best. There's no chance we will ever lose. Let me see. Your combination is Ledian and Ledian, right? Plusle and Minin. That's actually pretty stylized. Gotta say, gonna give you points for style on that one. However, I hate to disappoint you, you are about to get blasted back to the Stone Age by someone from the Stone Age, so they're the most qualified person here to tell you that that's where you're getting blasted. And with that, we should probably both level up, actually. Get level 59 on Hex. I was more mindful of your eyes when mashing through that, for those that would want to see that. And Rock grows to level 63! No, I can't believe it! How come you're so strong? Uh, team is the best in the world! Uh, I wish there'd be another game that would have all double battles where you could obtain, like, Plusle, Minin, Bulbidi, Lumise. That'd be so nice. Oh, uh, wow, we got a lot of trainers around here. I actually don't know where the third gram is, or the second gram is, I'll be real with you. I've been kind of fumbling around trying to find it, and I haven't had the best luck, so we might be just kind of fighting trainers for a little while and getting in a little bit more training. We're, we're at pretty competent levels, I have to say. That really hasn't been that bad. Uh, can you take out a Farfetch'd in one hit? Good. I would be ashamed of you and your family for generations to come if that wasn't the case. Granbull! Hex. I know, somewhere in that cold, icy shell. You are really smart, so I need you to imagine something with me. If you imagine really hard that it's 2013, I think this can be super effective. Come on. It is 2013. It is 2013. It is 2013. Uh, it is really not 2013. Ouch. Whoa! 
I was about to say, well, that's what I get for pretending we're in Pokemon X and Y, but I guess not. Uh, you might not be a fairy type, but I think I could switch to the other thing that would be a fairy type, and it would counter you pretty well anyway. Payback. Okay. Uh, I no longer have a fighting type move, just in time to be fighting you. <laughs> that's nice. And you flinched! Been a while since we got that stench flinch going on. Oh, what? Okay, now my mouth is closed. <laughs> that caught me off guard. I know occasionally you fight rich trainers that have full restores on them, but it's, I think it's been a couple of years since I fought any of them in any of my many playthroughs, so I kinda wasn't even considering it as a possibility for something that could happen. It's okay, though. It only delayed the inevitable by really not any hits at all, I don't think. Oh, one more hit, I guess. Gentleman Yan, I was abs absorbed in our Pokemon battle. I'd hate to be absorbed in a pile of steaming garbage. Hex grew to level 60, so that wasn't so bad after all. As I was saying, oh, what's this say? Route 13. So I think that we're toward the end of the route, and I gotta know what it is. Beep, beep. Okay, uh, uh, we're at the end of the route, ain't we? We're gonna go down there, and there's gonna be a gate. Yes, there is. And that hidden. Back by the twins! You run around this cape. I don't actually know what a cape is when it comes to bodies of water, so I'm gonna assume that that's the correct term because I don't know any other term. Grab a stardust, and then we grab a pearl. I was gonna say then we grab a dragon. And then I want another stardust. And then there's nothing more, okay. Back next to the Wingle Lady, I don't think we ever went down south next to her. From my point of view, art and feeling and logic! And a beautiful battle is also feeling and logic! It didn't really fit with as many syllables, thought I would have paint? Oh, an artist! I don't think we've seen that as a trainer class yet, and why you have a camera up? I don't know, maybe the lava on its back is the goo that you need to produce uh, alizarin crimson? I'm not sure about what uh, you would do. You know what, actually, you probably have rock slide and I'm probably wasting my time, but I'm gonna set up a light screen to see if I can take a flamethrower from you. Lava plume, even better. Come on, take it. Yeah, there's Hex showing off his bulk, or its bulk. And I do neutral damage with this because you're part ground type. Oh, there's the rock slide. Eh, it was fun while it lasted. I thought it'd be kind of fun to send out a crag and all against the camera up and just kind of mess with them. Ottawa, you got this. This fight has your name written all over it. Even though the thing written on it is ooh. Still, what does Ottawa start with? That's right. The same letter that ooh starts with. I'm very awkward. <laughs> okay, let's be a little bit better. Take a Razor Claw. That is the item that evolves Sneasel into Weavile. For those of you that caught a Sneasel back in Giant Chasm, you're happy to find that. There it is! It's an item ball! I was thinking I had to beat a trainer or something. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I guess I said I wanted to change a pace and I definitely fumbled around not knowing what I was doing for that. Oh, I already have a repellent effect. There I go fumbling around even more. Well, let's just give this to you before I fumble around off of this bridge. Oh, great. Can that be the gram? Let's show it to Wingle. Freak. You've, we've got them all. This helps Wingle a lot. The sound effect I like. Freak. Wingle flew away looking happy. Oh, something is on the ground. TM89 U-Turn. We finally have the ability to teach this move to whoever we want. With incompatibility limitations, of course. Thank you, trainer. 
Uh, when we see happy Pokemon faces, we feel happy, don't we? I, I almost read that as happy Pokemon faces. <laughs> I saw that for a second, I'm like, wait, what? Uh, misreading everything lately, it seems. Just kind of my lot in life. U-turn can be learned by no one. Worthwhile. Let's go back down to the southern end of the route because this wasn't disjointed enough already. Uh, feels good to be making some progress, except I actually really want to fight this lady. She's the only la person on this route that we didn't fight, and with her being the last trainer, it's like a gauntlet, you know? Something, a rite of passage that you have to pass to move on to the next town. Even though you can just walk through the grass with a rappel, I don't care. Oh, a lovely trainer. Would you like to meet the Pokemon that make me proud? No, I'd like to beat the Pokemon that make you proud. That's what I was just going on about. Let's do this. Socialite Marion. Ah, Marion the Librarian. <laughs> Rite of Passage. <laughs> a hard test. Guess what, Cricketot? You're a lucky little boy. Or lucky little girl, actually. You get to be the first one to feel the wrath of the fire-breathing snowflake. Do it! All right, I know that hidden power is not very strong. I guess, when do you ever see green fire? <laughs> I know that it probably wasn't gonna be anything too special, but maybe we'll run into a fight where it's quad effective and it makes sense to use. I, I just kinda wanted to use it at least once. Chime Echo. Wanna stay in? Yeah, you have garbage stats. I could probably take you out regardless. Oh, Synchro No- <laughs> Man, we are just seeing the most pathetic of the pathetic here today. Synchro Noise is a move that I'm willing to bet at least some of you have never heard of. It does damage to Pokemon of the same type as the user. It's a psychic type move itself. It does not change to be the same type as you, so it won't even get the same type attack bonus if you are psychic, but if you're psychic using it on a psychic type, then the enemy will resist it. It's only learned by normal flying and psychic type Pokemon, and because you yourself can only have two types, it is a move with bad type coverage. What an abstract concept that they found some way to make happen. It doesn't even have good base power. I think it has 70. It's very low and one of the worst moves ever created. Come on, come on. I'm one of the gate receptionists. Our assigned places change daily. Can you believe it? So you mean to tell me that different people are forgetting their uniforms every day on that one route? Okay. Maybe there's some sort of swamp gas in the air that affects people's memories. Welcome to Undela Town. We have made it a very long distance across Route 13. So long because there is no dungeon on that route. Up to this point, there has been a dungeon or a bridge on every way to every town ever since, you know, we got to the main ring. But we made it. And next time on Pokemon Black and White, we're going to have a relaxing vacation in Undella. See you guys then.